Hi everybody, welcome to another Sporty's Product Pirate video. Today we're flying with the all new PJ2 Com radio. This is the first backup radio that has built in headset jacks. Let's see how it works in this Cessna 172. Twenty years ago, it was important to have a NAVCOM backup for not only communication, but also navigation. Uh, but as we progressed through time, we all started flying with iPads and iPhones, using portable GPS receivers. And the idea that I'm going to tune in a VOR with this little radio, dial up a, a radio and try to fly inbound to a VOR, is kind of a daunting task nowadays, especially when I have very pretty magenta lines to follow on iPads. So what we need nowadays is not a, a robust, simple to use NAVCOM. We need a COM only that when I reach back in my flight bag, pull it out, I can figure out how to use it really quickly and also be able to plug my headset directly into the radio. The PJ2 has two uh, jacks up here, one for headphone and one for microphone. And uh, it's a very simple to use program. Take it out and just go. So as Doug said, the key feature on the PJ2 is that it's easy to use. An emergency is no time to be looking for an instruction manual. But easy to use doesn't mean it doesn't have features. PJ2 still has everything you need. So it's a full comm radio. It's got a last frequency button here on the side so I can flip flop between my most recently used two frequencies. This is uh, great for going between approach and tower if you had to or ATIS and Unicom if you're just using it on the ground before flight. It's got a large push to talk button. It's got a backlight button here so it's got this large screen that's easy to read in turbulence you can turn the backlight on and off with the push of a button the keypad is also large so you can push those buttons if you're bouncing around in the clouds the keypad is also backlit the other thing you'll appreciate is there's no complicated menu structure here just turn it on with the dedicated volume knob punch in a frequency and talk there's no menus there's no bands there's no settings there's nothing like that to, to mess with it also does have 20 ch memories, uh, memory channels. That's easy to access with the recall button. You can access those memory channels five at a time on the screen, so you're not constantly paging through different channels. You can see which one you, w you want to use right away. And the PJ2 even has built-in NOAA weather radio. So if you want to get a last-minute check on the area weather, you can just push that weather button before takeoff. There's also a dedicated 1 to 1.5 button. So again, in an emergency, if you had to, Take it out, turn it on, hold down that 2 button, and you'll automatically go to 1 to 1.5, and you can get help. The PJ2 has an alkaline battery pack on it, and the reason we really like alkalines is the shelf life. I can put this in my flight bag, and two or three years go down the line, I can reach back, uh, get it out of my flight bag, turn it on, and the batteries will still have charge on it. With many of the NICADs, uh, nickel metal high drive, even the lithium ion batteries, they do degrade over time. So having a reliable uh, batteries option for the uh, PJ2 was essential to its design. Uh, in addition to having an alkaline battery pack on it, we put a Type-C connector on the side. Uh, you've seen this in some of the newer ADSB devices as well as the newer iPads that are out there. So now we can use a Type-C plug to power it. If you have a battery pack, such as what we have here, the Flight Gear battery pack, I can plug it into the side, and these battery packs come in 10,000 and 20,000 milliamp hour options. And you can see the icon on the screen now changed to a USB plug. It's getting all its power it needs from this battery pack. And this will last for days on, on one uh, battery like this. Uh, so having backup power options for a radio is also very important, and that's built into the PJ2. One of the things you'll notice with this radio is the size. So many people try to make radios smaller, smaller, and smaller. And all you do is make a smaller screen, which is harder for me to read, and really small buttons, which in a turbulent situation to try to push in which frequency is going to be pretty hard. Uh, the other thing you'll notice is since you have a smaller radio, you definitely don't have room for PJ plugs. So the idea behind this radio came with, let's do the features first, and let's just see how big it gets. One of the most common questions we get about radios is what's the range on them? The unsatisfying answer is it depends. It really depends on altitude, where you are, what kind of airplane you're flying. All of these portable radios are limited to about 5 watts peak output, so none of them are going to reach ATC from 100 miles away. But in our testing with the PJ2, it's been reliable between 10 and 20 miles, actually beyond 20 miles in some circumstances depending on altitude. 
And in our opinion, that is plenty of range because you don't need to have a long conversation with ATC if your panel just went dark. All you want to do is call tower up about 10 miles out and tell them you're coming to make sure the runway is clear. So in our testing here today in the 172, we were beyond 20 miles, about 3,000 feet AGL, a typical altitude, and uh, the, the people on the ground could hear us just fine. We tested it also at 15 miles, 10 miles, and it worked great. So we're very comfortable saying this is usable up to 20 miles. PJ2 Kyle plugged into Bose A20 at exactly 23 nautical miles from Indy 69. All right, here's your GTN 650 test from 15.5 miles, 3,900 feet. And here's the PJ2 commonly radio with a Bose A20 plugged into the headset adapter at 15 nautical miles. In terms of reception, it's even better than that. You can receive usually 30, 40, maybe even 50 miles away because you're not as limited by the transmit power. So for receiving uh, ATIS from a far-off station at altitude or hearing traffic in the area, no problem at all. One other thing to remember on range, all of these radios are VHF, so it's line of sight. So higher altitude is better and uh, flatter terrain is better. If you're on the ground, your range is going to be less than 20 miles, definitely. Uh, if you're in mountainous area down low, your range is going to be lower than that. So just remember, line of sight is what governs VHF transmission, so if you're higher, uh, you're going to definitely be better off. We think the PJ2 is the perfect backup radio. It's perfect because it's easy to use and it doesn't require any adapters. It's also perfect because it's affordable. 